One of the greatest honors that a, uh, a friend can do for another friend is to call them out on their thinking and to be rigorous about it and say, hey, ooh, I, you're wrong in this area. Um, if, if, you're, if you're thinkers and people who are interested in this kind of stuff, that's what you do. And a friend of mine did that for me in the uh, video that I did. This is the part two of that video. And the part two will be addressing uh, my friend's responses. And we're going to call my friend Joe. He's a private kind of guy, and I don't blame him, and he's smart that way. So I will just call him Joe, and uh, I'll, I'll respond to him. So I, I have I've printed out his his ten points that he made, and I'll just go kind of go through them and address them one at a time. And his first is, as you can see off to the side here, you stated repeatedly that you have chosen to believe. And there are timestamps there. A chose burden of proof subjectively. And this is how I subjectively choose to view the world. Yes, absolutely. Um, that is absolutely true. Uh, I, I don't think that I have solved philosophy. I don't think that I know the objective truth of the world. I've heard some good arguments, but there are a lot of things that I believed years ago just because it felt good to believe them. And then it turns out, yeah, I discovered new things. I think yeah, those are a little bit better. So yeah, long story short, I don't know. Um, everything that I choose to believe is subjective. Um, I choose to use a certain system of thinking. Um, and, and that I think we should spend a moment on because this this is a goes into everything else. I choose a certain system of measurement of whether ideas are good or bad, a, a system that's a way of thinking, and that's called reason and logic. And I, I can't prove objectively that that's the best system. And so an example of this would be if somebody asked, what is the best number? And you know, you're thinking, well, best number for what? Like number of scoops of ice cream I get or how many billions of dollars I want or like what, what's the best what do you mean? I need more information. Nope, that's the question. What's the best number? Well, one way of coming up with this would be to get a deck of cards and draw a card out and see, oh, it's a seven. Okay, seven's the best number. That would be one system for determining the best number. Another system would be to find an author, J.K. Rawlings or or one of the biblical writers, the prophets, and say whatever they say the best number is, that's what it's going to be. Another would be to say, well, I'm kind of, I want everybody to get along well. So if we ask everybody what their favorite number is, most people are probably going to choose seven, I think, or nine. I'm not sure what it is, but that's what people are going to choose. And so if it's their first choice, maybe it's also their best choice, but that's kind of subjective to me. But there are all these different systems of figuring stuff out and ways of thinking. And I choose the system of logic and reason uh, using the scientific method uh, to come to answers about questions I have. And there are many questions that I don't come to the, I, I don't have a definitive answer about. Um, I can't prove a lot of things in this world. Some of them I don't really care to invest the time in because maybe I've heard a little bit about it and I'm like, eh, just not of interest. Others I really think about a lot and I cannot objectively prove something. Nope, can't do it. I don't think anyone can, but I, I can't either. So the second uh, point here is, isn't that, a ch isn't that choice an act of faith? I would po uh, posit that you cannot be certain that you are correct. I agree, absolutely. I do not, I don't agree that, that it's faith, but I do agree that I cannot be certain that I'm correct. Without certainty, isn't a choice an act of faith? So does it seem so does it seem hypocritical to criticize those who believe in God for the reason that it is an act of faith not supported by evidence? Question mark. Speaking of religion, you said at 1054, none of those things have been proven to me. Are you criticizing the religion for their reliance on faith or am I confused? Faith has a lot of different definitions. And I, if you look at where you look up the dic uh, dictionary fallacy, uh, and basically the idea is that if you took all of the dictionaries that have been written throughout history, and then you ask all of the people, what do you think such and such word means? You're going to end up with a thousand or a hundred thousand or a million different definitions for 
many words, and faith is one of those. And so it's probably fair of me when I say something, when I choose to use a word, for me to explain what I mean by that word. And the speaker of a sentence or a thought has the right to say, when I say beautiful, I mean black hair and uh, freckles. That's what's beautiful to me. Well, maybe the person who's listening says, well, no, black hair to me or beautiful to me is gray hair and no freckles. So it's up to the speaker to say, oh, I'm going to use this word beautiful or faith. So it's incumbent upon me. It's my responsibility to say, this is what I mean by that word. And there will probably be out of the 100,000 different definitions of faith that people have had over the years, uh, 999,999 are not going to match the one that I choose to use, what I think of when I think of faith. So faith to me is a belief in something that cannot be proven or isn't doesn't have really good evidence behind it. And, and so to me, that's faith. So an example of this would be, I don't have any faith in my wife not to cheat on me. Rather than that, I have 20 years of observation at 365-ish days a year. I have observed her. I've observed her to be a woman of integrity. Um, we don't lie to each other. We're, we're honest. And so that isn't faith. I don't have faith in my wife not to lying to me, cheating on me. I have confidence and I have a certain probability that I place on that just as I would place a probability on almost everything in life. Very few things are absolute 100%, but I would say that there's a really high probability that if I go out of town for three days, she's not going to cheat on me. That's, that's not faith. That's confidence. That's a projection. That's a prediction based on experience. So faith is a very specific thing to me. When I use the word faith, I'm talking about something that there's just no evidence for, there's no proof of, that that I have been made aware of. And so religion definitely falls into that category of being a faith. It's not a thing I'm confident about or that I think, it's just, it's a, it's faith. Well, maybe I do think, but it's a faith. And I think a lot of people's definition of faith would be a strong belief in something. And they're welcome to have that definition. Many dictionaries will agree with that. And there's nothing wrong with that definition. It's just not the one I use when I talk about faith. So yeah, I would say it's not a, my choice isn't faith. It's just a, I've looked at a system and I think, what's the best system out here for figuring out what the best number is or for measuring this or that, or if I want to measure something and see how long this is, I can use a tape measure, a scale, a, a feeling, a gut feeling, and I think eh, probably the best thing for that is a tape measure. And then when I look at things uh, philosophic, things social, I choose reason and logic. And it's a subjective choice of mine, absolutely. I can't prove that it's better than pulling a card out of a deck and saying, oh, this is what I'm going to believe today, or reading a Bible or any other book and saying, oh, whatever these people say is 100% true, and, and this is what I'm going to believe. No, different systems for looking at the world. Number three, uh, you said the religious off, only offer illogical arguments, and I would require the person who is speaking to me to understand logic. Absolutely. Those are kind of the rules that I have placed for having intelligent conversations with people, for having intellectual conversations with people. So if someone comes to me and says, I would like to discuss the best number with you. And here's how I choose it. I draw it out of a deck of cards. I'm going to say, hey, brother, how about instead of us having this conversation, we just go enjoy a beer because I don't have any confidence or respect for the system that you're using. Your system of just pulling something out of a deck, eh, I, I don't, it's not for me subjectively, just as that's your subjective choice. It's my subjective choice. Yeah, I don't want to do that. Uh, that's not how I'm going to believe in things. So, yeah, logic is my choice, logic and reason. And if any part of a the rules of argument, like you make an assertion, it, you say something, and then the next step is backing up that assertion, and then the next step is other people saying, yeah, but, and arguing with that assertion with their own assertions and their own evidence to back up those assertions. And there's, there's kind of this system that you go through in order to argue. And that, those are the rules that I choose to go by. 
There are probably many, many, many other systems, including pulling from a deck of cards, but that's not the one I choose. So, yeah, if I'm going to talk about intellectual, intelligent things, yeah, I mean, I see reason and logic as being a big part of that. I mean, maybe it's subjective, but that's that's what I see. Um, and, and, if, and if we use my definition of faith, then, I, I mean, you're welcome to use your definition or mine. I don't care, and I'm not about word games. Um, I can, I'm happy to give up a lot of words and just say, okay, if you want to use that one, I'll change my word to being brother or, you know, whatever. It is the point that I want to think about and to communicate, not the particular word. Number four, the belief in a creator God is rational and supported by evidence. This is a, the first sentence of this paragraph, and that is an assertion. So now we'll see if there is evidence for this assertion. The improbability of the universe and of the conditions that support human life are so great that a creator is the best rational explanation. Okay, that's another assertion. Now we'll get the evidence. Unless your religion is scientism, which precludes consideration of that full rational possibility. Okay, well, that was an assertion also. So there are a number of assertions in this paragraph, but no follow-up evidence. So I, I don't, I, I can't really respond to that. If there's some good evidence, and like one of them, it seems like probability. Um, it, it just seems like it's really improbable that, the Big Bang, which I don't believe in that either, um, that the Big Bang or evolution or creation or whatever, it seems improbable that this is how things happen. Okay, I I can agree. Like the Big Bang sounds so ridiculous to me. Like all of a sudden there's nothing and then it went boom and then now there's a bunch of stuff. Like to me, that sounds utterly ridiculous. Maybe it's because I haven't cared enough to look into it more. Maybe it makes a lot of sense. Don't know. But I look at that and I go, that's utterly ridiculous. And then I look at the story of creation and I'm like, well, wait a minute, that's even worse or equally as ridiculous. And I'm like, well, somebody give me some evidence for something. Not, um, well, trees are round and round things don't happen in nature and therefore some, now we're going to bring in this other thing that there's no proof of, that gods or unicorns, uh, if it was going to be round and that doesn't happen in nature, then there had to be unicorns that made them round. Well, no, 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 that's just a bunch of grasping. I mean, like, uh, let me chat with a unicorn. Show me some unicorn poop. Like, there's a lot of different ways that if you want me to believe in gods or unicorns or anything else, there are certain standards that I require be met for me to believe in something. Maybe they're subjective. Um, a lot of it's gut feeling. Uh, yeah, I can't, I probably have different standards for different things. Like, if somebody says it's a beautiful day, I'm more likely to go, oh, yeah, it is. Even if I think it could be better. Whereas if somebody says there is a God and that person is the ruler over everybody and we have to believe what they say, then I'm going to say, whoa, let's show me some more proof of this God. And so far, despite having an open mind, I've received pretty much the same 50 or 100 arguments my whole life. And none of them, or their assertions mainly, or assertions, arguments, whatever, but none of them have, have been something that when I thoughtfully consider, I go, Oh, okay, yeah, that, that proves that there is a God or that there's a really high probability. It doesn't even have to be 100% proof. Just, I don't know what my level would be, maybe 90%, 95% for something this important. Um, like, that's all I need. I don't need 100% proof, just a really high level of it. And so far, that's never been provided. So if somebody has something, I am all ears. I don't care enough to put a lot of time into it, so I would ask that you not say, read the Bible six times or read this book or whatever. No, just keep it short. Like, give me a good argument that will at least pique my interest so that I'll go on to the next step and learn more. Number five, if my counting is correct. I'm just drawing from a deck here. <laughs> I think this is number five. Of the eight definitions of intellectual, uh, or uh, you know what? I think I changed the word here. Intellectual from in intellectuality or intellectualism or something like that. But essentially that's what we mean, only the eighth mentions rationality. And there's a hyperlink there that goes to one uh, or goes and shows eight or nine, something like that, of the definitions that one defi uh, dictionary offers for the word intellectualism uh, or intellectually. There are 100,000 other or 
5,000 or 200, whatever. There are a lot of other definitions of the word intellectual out there. So if we're going to go with this particular website that has a list of 10 or so-ish um, definitions, yeah, I'll go for number eight. That's that's the definition that I mean it by or that I use it by. Um, and I, I looked at this this morning and I don't recall exactly what it says, but essentially for me, into, when I say an intellectual thinker, um, that is you're thinking deeply and you're applying the rules of logic and reason and argument and like that's what it means to me. And to others, it might mean other things, but that's how I meant it. Um, so if we want to change that from intellectual to blah, 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 or some other word, okay. Like I'm not tied to any particular word in any language. Um, that's how I use the word intellectual. That's what I mean by it. Um, let's see if the last ones, oh, I didn't read it all. Of the eight definitions of intellectual, only the eighth mentions rationality. Mostly it's about thinking, which the religious and theological do extensively. After all, our beliefs are constantly challenged by the un and under informed. Um, yeah, and we can call me uninformed or misinformed or malinformed, or we can put any kind of little pejorative definition on it we want. Um, that anybody who says, hey, wait, do you guys have any proof of this? Yeah, they would, definitely have not been informed of anything that makes me believe in Christianity or any other religion or, or God or anything. So, yeah, if you think, but it, but it's how you think. So I would say if the way that you think is to say, I think I'm going to check the deck of cards, I'm not going to call you an intellectual. Um, and then again, this is my definition. You can't just use some silly system and then say you're a thinker. Like you have to use a system of thinking. And I've looked for other systems and uh, other than logic, reason, scientific method, this kind of thing. And, and I haven't found another good, consistent system. And maybe one exists, but, uh, I, and I've tried to say, okay, maybe I can kind of go along with the, the Christian idea of, well, everything the Bible says is absolutely true. And then I look at it and then I find some verse you know, that talks about the horrible, awful stuff that God loved his folks doing back in Deuteronomy or Leviticus or wherever in the Old Testament. And then well, Christian says, well, yeah, but that was the Old Testament. And then now Jesus came along and made everything sweet and lovely. And I say, oh, well, can we take your Bible and can we cut that verse out and throw it on the ground? And will you urinate on that verse of the Bible? Will you like say, I utterly hate and say this is absolutely off. Well, no, no, it's God's word. Well, so he was wrong before, and then now he was right when having a kid made him change his mind. Like, it does not make sense to me based on my system of logic and reason. It just, it, it's, it just doesn't make sense. It's weird. And, and so if there is, if I'm misunderstanding it, if there's a better system, then great. Tell me about it. But until I find a better system, better measuring tape than the one I'm currently using, I have to use the one that I'm using because it makes the most sense. Even if it isn't perfect, it makes the most sense. I think six comes after five. So without a creator God, we are hard pressed to find a reason for life having purpose. Okay, that is an assertion. So now the second sentence, I'm hoping, will be evidence. If life has no purpose, Freedom, like everything else, is meaningless. It's not evidence. That's another assertion. And I'll tell you what my life's purpose is. The best I've figured it out is, first of all, I don't really need a purpose. It's just kind of like I enjoy getting up and going and doing stuff and making life happen. And I enjoy producing. I enjoy being liked by other people. I enjoy liking other people. I really enjoy being away from other people for 90% of my waking hours. The, I just, there are certain ways I find joy in life. I don't know that there's some big meaning to it. Um, I would, of course, be open to any reasonable, rational argument or assertion and, and the supporting evidence as to how there would be a reason or purpose in our life other than to serve some unproven person who's really violent and mean a bunch of the time until he has a kid and then he softens up. Like if you're not in that in group, it really sounds crazy. And, and I believed it 
for many years growing up until I was 16, 17, 18 years old, somewhere in there. Like I was just completely, Jesus loves me. Well, how do I know this? Oh, the Bible told me so. Oh, okay. Well, there's good evidence. There's good proof. Well, no, that's like that song is the one of the best songs to uh, or examples of illogical thinking, circular reasoning, begging the question, etc. I've given it a decent chance. Spent a lot of years in it, and it's just I, I need something more. I need something deeper, something more consistent, logical, reasonable, or proof that logic and reason aren't good. I'm sorry, I'm repeating myself. Let me speed up here. Um, okay, so yeah, I don't know that there is any meaning to life. I don't need meaning. I have a great life. Uh, next, liberty is a product of Christianity. There have been many small groups and individuals without it, but not free, it being Christianity, I believe, but not free civilizations. As Christianity fades, we watch liberty follow. And I don't know if that's true. I, I, if you have supporting evidence, that would be interesting to, to see, to read, to actually debate online, or not online, on a on a live video going back and forth. And, and I don't want to go read a 400-page book that I'm not interested in. And, and if that makes me shallow or lazy, um, my life is too full of meaning and happiness and joy and doing things that I enjoy and that, that I, I don't want to read stuff I'm not interested in. I, I'll, you know, I'll give it a couple pages or I'll give it a 20 minutes or so, but I'm just not interested in a 18 hour read or, or videos, or I just, unless my interest gets peaked and then I'll put hundreds of hours into it. But so far my interest hasn't been peaked in this stuff. Um, so I don't know that this is all true. Uh, so I shouldn't probably argue with something that I don't even know if it's true. I, I don't know. I haven't studied history enough to to say that for the last 20,000 years of humanity, you know, 15,000 years ago, there was a tribe that was free for a while, but it was because they were Christians. And then somebody got the idea, hey, let's let's be the tribal chief here and screw all the gals and take money from all the dudes and tell them what to do and we'll call that money I'm taking taxation and we'll call the getting with the gals, we'll call that Manukta. And uh, I don't know. I, I don't know history well enough. Maybe that happened, but I doubt it. Um, and even if we use the 6,000 year time frame for uh, the world's or human's existence, um, I, I don't know that there was never liberty. There was never freedom for the first 4,030 years uh, before Christianity came about. I, I don't know enough about history. Those are all assertions, and if there's any supporting evidence, again, I'm open to it. Um, let's see. I think we're on number eight. We choose our own master. It's kind of assuming that a master has to be involved in the picture, but I'll go with it. If you choose yourself as your master, you have chosen a weak boss. If you choose God as your master, no one can claim to be greater. God is the perfect ideal. Choosing less is just that. Picture a society where most recognize that the first responsibility of all of us is to God. So now look where we are. Status have replaced a duty to God with devotion to the state and to the self. There's so much wrong here, Joe. I, I don't know where to... It's just a bunch of assertions. It's a bunch of, hey, I have this idea, I have this idea, I have this idea, but, but I need something to say, okay, here's one idea, and let me prove this to you completely using logic and reason and you know basic rules of argument, of thinking. In, in a, I don't know where to go with this. Um, if you choose God as your master, no one can claim to be greater. Well, I claim unicorns are greater. Oh, just happened. So I proved that sentence wrong. Uh, what am I missing? Like, anybody can claim anything. They might not be right, but anybody can claim anything. Why does somebody have to have a master? Whether it's me being my own master or somebody else being a master, I guess that would come down to definition. Uh, of a word. And maybe in the way that you are using master, 
That means the intelligent brain that controls an individual's thoughts and actions? If that's the definition of master, I would have to rethink it. I'd probably have to come up with my own word because master to me means different things. So I would have to kind of have these biases. I would have to kind of get rid of those to look at it from this other perspective. I think this paragraph, it, it, yeah, choosing less than choosing a God is, is just that, or the God, the one and only true God, which is, of course, the speakers, whoever's saying it to me, Muslim, Christian, Jew, whoever, it's, they know the one and only true correct God. Even denominations within Christianity know the one and only true. I don't see, yeah, that, that paragraph doesn't, doesn't hold any water. Like pick pick one of the assertions in there and let, let's really dig deep on that. Let's spend two hours doing a, a video on this. Let's really dig into one of those and prove it before we move on to the next. It's like, yeah, I don't know where to go with that. Um, number nine, in order to get things, we have to give up other things. We can't have everything. Okay, those are two assertions. This is sacrifice. Okay, so okay, so that's the definition of sacrifice. If Ayn Rand would disagree, but gotcha. If it were necessary, would you sacrifice your atheism to gain liberty? Or is atheism more important than liberty? So the term your atheism, or I'll use it in, in first person, my atheism, it it's a like atheism is not believing in something like would I give up would I believe in something that I didn't know was true would I believe in a falsehood in order to have liberty like is the offer that or the suggestion that if I believe in the existence of unicorns then I can have liberty in my life and I just have to turn my brain off not be rational logical reasonable require any evidence as long as I just have faith as I use the term as long as I have faith in unicorns, now there will be liberty in the world and in my life. If I could just flip that switch, I don't know. I have to really have to think about that. Truth to me is such an important thing, the search for truth, that I'm tempted to say that that would be at the top. But maybe not. Like, I really like liberty. So if I could believe in a falsehood in order to have liberty, to have freedom, I don't know which the higher value would be. My values are, just as everybody's are, they're subjective. The liberty is way, way, way up there, but so is truth. So I don't know in that false dichotomy, I don't know which one, if I had to choose one or the other, I don't know which I would choose. Um, yeah, and atheism isn't, I wouldn't say it's a, it's a belief. It's a state of not believing in something. Like, or or I, I don't believe that, Anybody is going to drive into my driveway. So I'm an A driveway entrance. Just... Yeah, nobody's still pulled in. Still nobody. I'm not opposed to it. If they pull in, I'm going to change, and I will no longer be an A driveway entrance. entrance. I'll, I'll be a driveway entrance instance because it's been proven to me by my view, or if somebody says, hey, come out here and look at these tracks in the snow, somebody's pulled into your driveway. Oh, yeah, they did pull into my driveway today. Yeah, I'm happy to, I mean, it's not something I'm holding on. It's not like it's a, a treasured belief. My life would be unbelievably smoother and friendships. I was at a friend's house at some neighbors the other day, and they asked me to say grace in front of their kids. I'm not going to pretend prayer is real in front of kids and, and spread that falsehood and provide that example. It's like telling kids that Santa Claus is real. I don't lie to people or, or I, I really work hard not to spread falsehoods. And I had to decline doing the prayer. That was tough socially, like from just a neighbor kind of thing. Like, wow, this guy is kind of being a jerk. If I could have just been a Christian or a Muslim and said, yeah, absolutely, you know, even if it was just God is great, God is good, bless the meat, damn the bones, let's eat. Like, even if it was a simple prayer, it would have been so much easier. I want to be more like all the people around me because it would be so much easier. But I can't give up truth for that. I just can't. So let's see, what do we have next here? 
it looks like we are at number 10. I wonder if you have personal reasons for your atheism. I once read that C.S. Lewis, a lifelong Anglican, couldn't become Catholic because he was on a train and a Catholic Irishman defecated on the floor. My father used to say, Lord, protect me from your followers. Like atheists, there are good and bad Christians. Absolutely. Um, there's a bias there. I've seen Christians do so many good things, Muslims, Jews. I, I've seen a lot of beauty in this world. Like It is just filled with awesome people doing awesome stuff. Some of the people who do these awesome things have irrational beliefs in various gods. And there's, as you say, there are also bad things that Christians have done, and I've experienced that as well. Um, that bugs me. But, yeah, I, mean, I completely agree with what you're saying. I, I don't judge, like, there's some jerk atheists out there. There's some status collectivist atheists out there. But I'm not going to start believing in the existence of theism, theists, theos, gods, the supernatural, because somebody is a jerk who also believes that. And it's the same the other way around. So, yeah, I've had negative experiences in my life uh, with Christians specifically, but I can separate that. I think I can separate that. I mean, it's gonna, there's going to be this bias within me, but that's why one must think, why I choose to think logically, deeply, and with reason and say, okay, after this thing happened, who should I be upset with? Should I be upset with... Should I create a fictional character in my imagination and say it was God's fault that this happened? Or should I say this person who believed in a certain thing, they believed two scoops of ice cream is a perfect number, and they believe in a God, and they believe that they look good in that sweater. They have a certain set of beliefs. And I can't just say, well, everybody who likes that kind of sweater is wrong. Well, it has nothing to do with it. That would just be kind of like judging the idea based on the person's problem in another area. So yeah, I, I've had those experiences, but I don't, I think I'm, uh, I don't know, a critical enough thinker that I'm able to look beyond that and say, no, this person did a really nice thing, but it's not because they were Christian. This person did a really mean thing, but it's not because they were a Christian. Um, I think that many people being involved in religion helps them greatly. One of my dear friends makes his living. He's a full-time minister of two churches, and his livelihood is about this. He spent years in seminary studying hard and really solidifying many dogmatic beliefs, and his whole world is wrapped around it. He, he has told me about the in their particular religion, there's a lot of, I think it's kind of like Catholicism, there's a lot of repetition. It's not like the Southern Baptist churches I used to go to where you know, you'd start being a minister when you were 14 or 15 years old if the Lord called you to it and not like these college boys. You go in there and you don't prep for it. You just walk into church and you speak the truth. Can I hear an amen? And well, this guy, this buddy of mine, isn't like that at all. Like They have a preset script. People repeat the same thing, go to their knees, stand up repeat it over and over. And he has talked about how on when he's at his parishioners, when they're on their deathbed, repeating those same things that they've heard thousands of times is so comforting to them in their dying minutes, hours. And I believe him. And I believe that his religion comforts him. And I believe to him, I believe that for him, if I was, if I cared, if I wanted to try to convince him to be an atheist, it would destroy his life. He's an old man, and he has one job, one full-time job, and that is getting paid to believe in theism and, and to spread it and to, to help parishioners with stuff. It would, it would really, I'm not going to say destroy his life, but it would make a huge change in his life. He, he, he's, it brings great happiness to him and money, and, and I, no, I wouldn't wish upon him truth or I, I, like he can choose whatever he wants. So yeah, I don't know that I would ever really want to change anybody's mind. Um, on the other hand, I think that truth is pretty big of a deal. I love finding truth. Uh, and as my friend, friend Patrick says, kind of my goal is 
to believe as many true things as I can and to disbelieve as many untrue things as I can. So as I see things in life and I say, is this true? Um, if it is, I want to believe in it. If it's not, I want to know that. And that's just kind of how I, I look at things. All right, we're going to continue now with uh, number 11. Number 11 is all analogies break down at some point. Instead of comparing God to unicorns, consider the analogy of gravity. Can't see it, taste it, hear it, smell it, or touch it. But it is a useful theory for explaining things we can perceive. Does it exist? What about emotion or poetry? Can rational thought encompass these things, which many find to have real, uh, to be real and having value? Um, yeah, let's let's actually take that gravity example. I, I like that. That was your your first and primary one. Let's say that you were saying to me, uh, Shepherd, I suggest that you believe in a god, and then Bill says, Hey, Shepherd, I suggest you believe in gravity, and then I say to you. Great, I'm all ears. Tell me more. Provide some evidence for why God exists. And then I say to Bill, hey, Bill, provide some evidence for why uh, gravity exists. And Bill starts out and he says, well, gravity is this thing that kind of, I don't know all the details of it, but it pretty much just sucks stuff toward the center of the earth or it pulls it that way or there's some like magnetic kind of thing. And then I say, well, that sounds ridiculous. And Bill says, well, Let's let's try it. Here's an apple, and he takes the apple and he drops it, and it goes toward the center of the earth. And I go, well, but that's just once. And then I do some research, and and I find that pretty much everything falls toward the center of the earth that has any weight. And then I notice the things that are heavier fall faster than the lighter things. And and I kind of now I'm like, well, okay, this gravity thing, I'm pretty persuaded. And Maybe that's not the best example. Maybe there, or not example, maybe that's not the complete proof. Maybe rather than something being at the center of the earth and sucking stuff that weighs something toward it, maybe there's this force at a higher level around the earth that's pushing on it, and it, it just happens to push it toward the core, and we think it's the core. Could be. Don't know. But gravity? Bill has persuaded me that until I find something better, I'm going to say, okay, gravity exists, and here's how I think it will affect my life. If I don't want my apple to be bruised, I'm not going to drop it because gravity is going to suck that puppy right down toward the center of the earth. Then I move on to you, and I say, okay, Joe, what evidence do you have that a god or more than one god exists? And there's nothing. Like, there is no even indication. The, the arguments that I've heard most frequently, I'm not putting words in your mouth, but, well, how would you explain a gorgeous sunrise? Well, by all means, I'm not going to make up a mythological creature to explain the sunrise. I don't know about sunrises. I think either the earth revolves around the, the sun or the sun revolves around the earth or something like that. Okay, I can kind of bite off on that, and I'm, maybe the information will be updated at some point, the, the proof, the, the evidence, and I'll go along with that. But for now... The last thing I would do is just make up a creature and say, well, that's why it, it happens. That's that's not critical thinking. That's not intellectual thinking. So I'm waiting for any evidence of God's existence, like real true evidence, not feel it in your heart, not it being the, the made up reason for why something else exists or happens. And, and well, you know, how could a, a, have you ever seen a scientist create a human being? Nope. Well, then God must have done it. Well, no. That's that's. Have you have you heard this analogy or, or this the story about somebody who's walking along and uh, you know, on a trail in the woods and they come upon a pile of sticks and the sticks are stacked up, kind of crossing each other, and it's just this intricate, you know, log cabinish kind of stack. And then the the question is. Do you think that they just naturally fell out of the trees and landed in this intricate stack? No, it doesn't look like it to me. I've never seen branches fall. Like It seems really a huge stretch to think that that would just happen. And then the next question is, well, then there must be a god, right? Well, no. I, I mean, it looks to me like they were stacked by something intelligent, but like to automatically assume that there's a god? No, that doesn't make any sense. Like I, I'm waiting for some evidence, some good, some good thinking to show 
that there is this mythological creature who created this stack of sticks or created humanity or whatever. Like maybe, maybe that's the case. I'm not opposed to it in the least. Not an anti-theist. I just haven't heard anything to ever make me believe. So that was the gravity example. Kind of talked about that. Gravity and uh, like that's something that can be proven or demonstrated to a pretty high degree of, of success. And then emotion and poetry. Well, emotion, I don't know. That's some psychological thing where people choose to feel or just do feel. Their brain chooses to sense things in a certain way. Uh, and I guess it can be changed sometimes. You can choose to be happy or sad about a certain event. Um, but, but I don't uh, I don't know. I just I don't know about that either. So, yeah, I just that one I say I have no idea. Um, poetry. Poetry, isn't that just a collection of words that some people find to be pleasing? So humans have language, and when we say Betty bought a bit of butter, but the butter Betty bought was bitter, so Betty bought a bit of better butter, but the better butter was also bitter. Well, that's more of a tongue twister than a, than a poem, but I think the kind of the alliteration, I think it's called, I mean, it sounds pretty cool, but it's not like... I just proved that that existed. Like, I just proved that you can have alliteration that kind of sounds like an auctioneer. But so I don't think I completely understand poetry, emotion, beauty, etc. Like, those are all things that, you know, can you prove that something is beautiful? No, you can prove that that's your, the lens through which you see, that, that that's your emotion or feeling or conclusion. But yeah, I don't think you can prove a lot of stuff. Like, you can't prove that that my thumb is a beautiful thumb. Well, no, to me it is, because it's got some really cool scars and it reminds me of cool stuff. But to someone else, it's just an old man's fat, chubby, sunburned, sun-speckled, sun-cancered thumb, and it's, it's ugly. So I think it's, it's, yeah, I can't prove that that is beauty. Uh, so, yeah, I'll kind of leave that one there. So now we're at number 12. There are many good arguments for atheism. Atheism, I don't think so. Um, like, I'm an atheist, but I don't think there are good arguments for atheism. There, there are just no good arguments for the opposite. So it's kind of a, a reduction of something rather than an addition of something. Like, I think the world just exists. I'll, I'll say that I, yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. Maybe there are good arguments for not believing in that which isn't proven. Okay, I should just read the full paragraph. There are many good arguments for atheism. You made some, but you also made some weak ones. There is vast intellectual history of theists. There's a vast intellectual history of theists. Consider Thomas Quintus. In modern times, Jordan Peterson is an intellectual's intellectual. Theists wrestle with the deepest levels of meaning. Also, most of our foundational science scientists believed in God. The idea of the Big Bang came from a priest. Science originated in Christian monasteries. Christians are driven to understand the details of God's creation. If the universe has no meaning, why bother studying it? Okay, so I think that last one didn't go with the rest of the paragraph, so I'll kind of address it separately. Um, yeah, so, so we're mentioning that other people have also believed that my thumb is beautiful, or in Christianity, or theism, or, or whatever the number of people who believe in something isn't what makes it true. If that was true, democracy would be a good idea. It's not if there are other big minds. But I see where you're going, and I will completely say, yeah, Jordan Peterson is somebody who I struggle with because he has a lot of things to say that are really good. And I'm like, wow, this guy's really bright. He's a true intellectual's intellectual. He's awesome. But then when he says God exists, then I'm like, oh, well, just like your other stuff, are you going to explain it really well so that I can understand it? And then he doesn't. Um, I think it's a psychological or a, it's a mental construct to believe in a, a deity. Um, so, and he hasn't proven otherwise. So I, this kind of goes back to something I think I said in my uh, original video that many of my friends, and Joe included, is very rational and reasonable. We had a conversation uh, last year or the year before when we were talking about the the panic of the masks uh, that, that the, they put on in 2020, 2021, 2022. And he was saying, I absolutely wear a mask. He, he, he's a machinist, a welder. And he says, when I'm in there and I have these little particles of, 
metal, I think it was, when they're floating around the air, I absolutely wear a mask. It makes sense. The science proves it. It's a good idea. But when I'm going to the grocery store, even in high COVIDian season, I'm not going to wear a mask. It's, it doesn't make scientific sense. It's not logical. It's not reasonable. And so Joe uses logic and reason and science sometimes really well. And so we can have a long conversation about masks or other things. But there's this one thing that some people, I'd say Joe, Jordan Peterson, many others, some of them dear friends of mine, we hit this one topic and then the whole system of thinking, logic, reason, scientific method, that's all just tossed out of the window. It's, nope, this just makes you feel good. I really believe it's the case. Hey, there's a huge body of history. We, you know, if, if people have been writing about this for centuries, for millennia, then it's, it's got to be true. But there's no good proof or evidence like these same friends would require for something else. And so that's, yeah, there, there are a lot of really smart people that have thought that there were gods or that the earth rotated around the sun or whatever. And then you 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 test these ideas, you see if there are any better better answers. And if there aren't any better answers, then you just pick the best one you have. Or in my case, you say, well, I don't have a better answer for how gravity works, but yeah, it looks like I'm going to go for the, you know, something, something toward the center has this magnetic pull and it's, it's sucking stuff down. It's also okay to say, like I kind of like I do for how human beings came about. How how why are we all all of our little critters running around on this rock? How did how did the creation happen? How did evolution happen? Whatever we want to call it, well, I don't know. And that's one that I wouldn't. If somebody said, "Are you an evolutionist?" I'd say, "Nope." Pro uh, the point hasn't been proven clearly enough. Um, nobody has con persuaded me to be an evolutionist or a big bangist or definitely not a creationist. And that's the one that I've heard a little bit more about. Well because it's easy. It's, it's just a, a simplistic, there was a God and he created stuff and poof, and it was there. And he, he came out of nothing, but, or it, it just doesn't make sense. So I, I, I'd say it's okay to pick the best idea you have, or if it really sucks, kind of like how humans and, and the world came to be. If you don't have any good solutions that you, you can wrap your head around, and maybe it's just because I'm not that smart, but I can't wrap my head over wrap my head around evolution or creation or whatever, then I think it's perfectly acceptable for an intellectual to say that is one of a billion or so questions that could be asked that I don't have an answer for. And I would not, I'm not going to vote one way or the other. Or I'm not going to say that I'm leaning one way or the other. I have no idea. Maybe there's a 18th better option. Um, if the universe has no meaning, why bother studying it? And, and it makes me think, I think a little bit ago, I said something like, you know, well, I don't know that life has meaning. And then I, a few minutes later, I said, well, my life is full of meaning. I, I guess I, I'm thinking of meaning in different ways. I'm not being consistent. That's bad on me. Um, so I don't, I guess I would have to really think about what meaning means. Uh, maybe Bill Clinton could help me explain it. I, I think that meaning, is it purpose? Is it is it a desire to get up and go out and do something? Um, I love intellectual conversations. And I feel like we are having a conversation, at least on my end, boy, is that rude. But many of the things that I'm saying here, like th there are some points that I think it's like my answers should be satisfactory, or you should come back and say, and I'm talking to Joe right now, or anybody else who's, who's watching, you should come back and say, Shepard, you said, blah, blah, blah. Let's stick to that one point that does not make sense. These are the reasons why. This is what does make sense. These are the reasons why. Hit me. And then I come back with a with an, a response to that. That would be intellectualism. And of, and I think we're at number 12 right now, I think just about everything so far has not been an intellectual argument. It's been tossing out assertions or premises or, or arguments, but there hasn't been anything to back them up. And that is where I kind of draw the line for intellectualism. If you, if you want to do the intellectual thing, Jordan Peterson, Joe, whomever, then you got to do, you, you got you to work the steps. You got to be logical, reasonable. You got to follow those steps. Or maybe, maybe I'm th expecting too high of a standard. Maybe I'm expecting that a person is 100%. Uh, intellectual or is intellectual in their thinking 100% of the time. 
and maybe Jordan Peterson on 95% of the topics he talks about. He is reasonable, rational, <clears throat> believes in science. Maybe you do too, Joe. But then both of you, <clears throat> excuse me, when you get to that 5%, you go, nope, throw out all the rule books, throw out all, all the measuring tapes. Now we're just going to base everything on feels. I don't know at what point I would say, if a person does that 1% of the time, would I still title them as an intellectual? Or would I only expect 1% of their conversations to be intellectual? And then I would say, eh, he once said something that was intellectual. So that, that plumber is an intellectual because he once said something kind of he thought through. I don't know what the, my standard is. So that's, that's on me. That's maybe I should come up with a number or maybe I should, maybe I shouldn't have to do anything. Maybe it's just a gut feeling. Um, maybe I should change my language. Maybe I should understand that intellectual isn't what I think the word to be. Um, maybe I should come up with something, a rational intellectual. Maybe I should add a, a descriptive to the descriptive word uh, to be more intellectually consistent and honest about it. So I need to think about that some, but that could be a very good point. Number 13, I think agnosticism is a cowardly position. I respect that you take a stand as an atheist, but it saddens me because to me, it looks like you are crippling yourself. To use an analogy, it is like you are refusing to see color. It is everywhere around you, yet you block it out. Being colorblind is not all bad. It has the advantage of letting you see shapes and shading better. You aren't distracted by reds and yellows. You are not offended by badly dressed people wearing clashing colors. But still, excellent. I love this. Um, the, the analogy of being able to see things in color, and I've, I've heard this analogy not in regard to or regards to uh, believing in uh, theistic uh, creatures, but MDMA or ayahuasca or, or th those kind of hallucinogen uh, plant medicine drug things. Um, and I've heard arguments from friends who say, you know, you think you see the whole world, and, and, but you don't. When you look at a plant, you just see a plant. But when you ingest some of this stuff, it frees your brain up, and now you see in color. And all of a sudden, there are all these, all these new colors you never knew existed. The plant is actually talking to you or smiling at you. And there are all these things that you had never, you never realize that plants are living things. Well, yeah, you kind of, yeah, they live. If you don't water them, they die. But you never realize that, that they can smile at you or that they can talk to you or that they can teach you things. And so I've heard this argument about how if you change your mental state, whether through chemicals or natural substances or through choosing a belief, then you'll be able to see things in more color, more richness, more fullness. Your life will be better. And maybe that's true. I tried ayahuasca once in Mexico, and there was a lot of surrounding circumstances that made it not be a pleasant experience. I think one of those is that I'm such a boring old man square. Um, I am just so square. I, I couldn't relax enough. I didn't take enough shots of the ayahuasca stuff. Um, I, so it didn't really do anything for me other than kind of the negative consequences of it, but I didn't have any cool hallucinating hallucinations or epiphanies or anything like that. Uh, grandma ayahuasca didn't hook me up too, too well. It was probably because I entered into it without quite an open enough mind and, I'm a big guy and should have had more and, and I'm such a straight square kind of guy that it just it didn't work. But I, I've tried ayahuasca. I've tried Christianity and neither of those things in my very, I, I would say unfairly small sampling have brought joy to my life. Um, and then there are other business reputation reasons that I don't want to try a bunch of other stuff, uh, especially in the United States. Um, so I'm, uh, yeah, it, maybe MDMA or religion or whatever it would bring more, more color to my life. And I think that's something I hope you will bring up again. And I hope my my friend Sterling Lujan will also bring up, hey, man, are you ready to try some MDMA? Uh, probably getting the initials wrong. Um, and I hope that everybody who has an idea for how my life can be richer will continue to extend those invitations to me. Um, but some of the things kind of have left a bad taste in my mouth. Uh, boy, that's just clever. Um, ayahuasca is one of them, and uh, spirituality, Christianity is another one. Um, I think ayahuasca could be proven scientifically to tell me that 
those the the nastiness that that I tasted go it goes in and then it changes my brain and it, and it makes things fire faster or slower and then it blends them and like there's probably some scientific reason why it does or doesn't work depending on who you talk to if you talk to a plant medicine person or if you talk to an actual chemist or somebody who understands psychology um, maybe the answers would be different um, for religion for spirituality got some biases from the past but i still first have to believe something exists um, unless your suggestion is you don't have to really believe it you just have to convince yourself and pretend that it exists and then the goodness will come so maybe i'm missing the whole point maybe your point isn't a god exists maybe your point is try to get yourself to believe there's one and then you're going to have an awesome life if that's the case yeah maybe there's something to that uh, lastly, number 14, totalitarians always suppress Christianity. It goes with gun confiscation. The most murderous regimes have all been atheistic. Huh. They can't allow loyalty to anything outside the state. Yeah, I, I haven't studied all civilizations, so, um, or all totalitarians, so I don't, I can't agree. But I'll I'll trust you if you have studied all uh, totalitarians and they always suppress Christianity, then yeah, it makes sense to me. I would think that if I was trying to be a statist bastard and control people, yeah, I would want them to completely believe in me and my dictatorship or democracy or whatever it is. I would want them to believe in that and not put any other gods before me. Um, I would want them to think of the state as the god. So yeah, that I think I'm agreeing with you on this. This last one, um, I don't know that the most murderous regimes have all been atheistic, but when I think about Mao was, uh, Pol Pot, I think he was atheist. Hitler wasn't, I think he was a Christian, but I don't know. Um, and those were just more recent people. I don't know Genghis Khan, um, Alexander. I, I don't know enough about history to really say who was murderous and who wasn't, because the peacekeeping forces are pretty murderous also. Um, and a lot of them are Christian in the last, you know, 50 years or 100 years or whatever. So I don't know. Um, yeah, so that's kind of, I'll kind of wrap it up with that. And then my hope is that you'll pick uh, out of the 14 points, you'll maybe pick one that is your very best argument for why a God or multiple gods exist. And then maybe we can do a deeper dive into that. But let's follow the, let's follow the rules of argument. So there's an assertion, and then there's evidence for the assertion, and then we argue about the evidence. I provide my evidence. We go back and forth, and then out of that, we hopefully find truth. Um, so I think that could be useful if you're interested in that. And either way, thank you for thinking and putting the time into this, and like we're both trying to wrap our brains around this thing, and, and we both think we kind of have a pretty good angle on it, and we are coming to different conclusions, so there's a good chance one of us is wrong. Uh, could be me. So if you can think of any evidence, any any good way to persuade somebody, um, other than through an emotional circumstance of, you know, my house burned down, I lost my job, and my family died, and I am just reached out, and I needed something, and I found God. But not something where you're emotionally driven, but like a good reason-based, uh, science-based uh, choice to believe in God. Um, I'm always interested in hearing it. I look forward to a response. I'd actually love to just have a, no, not a live, because I don't know how to do that technical stuff, but I'd love to have a, a video back and forth. We'll Zoom it and record it and um, share it with everybody. I, I love the idea of arguing back and forth. And if, if you were thinking this stuff, Joe, there is a good chance that there were other people who watched the video who were thinking along the same lines but didn't care enough about thinking to do anything about it. So thank you for your time and attention. And uh, thanks for watching the channel. And if you, Joe, or anybody else has any questions or arguments, please write them below or contact me and we'll do a, a recording show.